Hi guys, where am I? There I am, I've got this dodgy camera going on. Welcome back to the Two Fat Blokes Kitchen. Uh, I might need to adjust this camera a little bit, I'm twisting my back out trying to get in here. What I'm going to do is a very simple but yet impressive uh, mushroom and no, prosciutto de parma, prosciutto um, ravioli. Really, really simple, and I, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use wonton wrappers, but we'll worry about that later. First, we've got to work on the filling, and this is so simple, but it is impressive. And what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to do it in some sort of a, I'm not 100% sure yet, we'll work that as we go, but a bit of a butter and sage, um, brown hot butter, a bit of sage, over the top, beauty you pour it. Well, uh, you know, yeah, we'll see how we go. So, what we're going to do is start, we need some garlic. Obviously, mushrooms. We need some prosciutto. Just a bit of the store bought prosciutto. You don't need to go to the deli and get the fancy stuff. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have that strong flavour of the prosciutto and the saltiness of the prosciutto that we really need to get into this mushroom to draw out the flavour of the mushroom. This combination is absolutely cracking. These two uh, are made for each other. Anyway, out of sight. So, all we're going to do, start off, I'll just get a bit of uh, garlic ready to go into the pan in a second. So first thing we do, break off a clove of garlic. Now for those of you who don't know how to um, prepare garlic, it's really dead simple. I mean, it's all, you can peel the things, but it's awfully annoying. Just go bang, give it a crush on top. That simple. Quick crush on top, take the mud off it. Don't want to eat anyone's clacker, so we take that off. And as you can see, it just falls out of there. It just falls out of there. All right, that's how easy that is. We're just going to give this a quick little bit of a uh, what for. Okay, a little bit of a quick pop up there. Remember, this is the two fat blokes. This is not Jamie Oliver, all right? Nothing has to be perfect here. It's all about just having a nice, easy, quick, cheap, and impressive dish. So that's done. I don't need to worry about any more. That'll do. I don't need a little bit. All right, the shrooms. Two schools of thought, one is skin and one's unskin them. I like skinning them only because it's fun. Pull that little guy out. What you do, stick your finger on, peel, 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 peel. Miss a bit? Doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Just peel it off, peel it off into the compost. Always good to have a bit of compost. Helps the old uh, herbs grow. If you've got the herbs growing in the garden, because we always like that. A bit of time later, and that's not time as in the clock, that's time as in the herb that we're going to use to go into the dish. A bit of trivia for you. Number one eaten herb or spice on the planet. What do you reckon it is? Thinking, thinking? Draw a hand up. For two reasons. One, obviously, it's through Asia, and numbers speak for themselves. But on top of that, it is not only a herb, but it's a spice. If you don't know the difference between a herb and a spice, Google it. Actually, don't worry about that. A herb is a flower or a leaf, uh, and a spice is a seed. In rudimentary terms, not rocket science, is it? All right, I've got a couple of straw. We'll keep going, but we need a we need a bit here. Doesn't matter if you make sure this. This is a really simple thing. As you can see, look, I haven't got any recipes going here. I'm not measuring it out like you have to with desserts. And the main reason for that is I don't have a recipe for this, but also it doesn't matter that much. As long as you get your flavours roughly within the ballpark of what you're trying to achieve, then you'll be fine. That's all you need to worry about. So it's all about balance of flavours, salty, sweet, hot, spicy, blah, blah, whatever you want. Hot, spicy, that was weird. Sweet, sour, you know, all that sort of stuff. All that chefy talk, we don't worry about that. We're not chefs here, we're just cooks. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're just going to basically chop up these, uh, these little guys, get them all rolling. Because what happens, we've got to sweat these things off because water. The water's no good, it doesn't taste like much. So, while I'm doing that, over here, I've got a pan. I'm just going to put the heat on ever so slightly just to start warming that bad boy up so she's ready to go as soon as I'm ready to go so we're not spending time waiting around for stuff. 
That music's a bit loud in the background, isn't it? Bloody nightclub in here. Let me just turn it down give a sec. Where's my controller? All right, I can hear myself think again. All right, let's go back to this. As you can see, look, it looks all fats, fancy and flashy, doesn't it? But it's not really. Just a bit of practice, that's all. Popping it through. As I said, we're not worried too much because this is all, this is just the filling. You know, we're not looking at it, so we don't have to have it perfectly shaped. All we've got to do is get it all down into similar small sizes so it all cooks roughly evenly at the same time. All right. Remember the shrooms, they've got to go in first because we want the shrooms to sweat off a little bit before we add the other flavours. We're going to leave the garlic a little bit later. Now, there's a couple of schools of thought on garlic. I like to leave it a bit later so we keep that strong garlicky flavour happening. Because if you don't, if you, if you drop the garlic in early, what happens is it browns, which is fine, but the sugars come out and then what happens is it gets burnt very quickly. It goes very bitter and nasty. So a lot of your root vegetables, your root vegetables are very high, very high in um, sugars, natural sugars. And that's why when we cook them, they brown very quickly. And we want that because that's part of the caramelization that you want to help enhance the flavors too. You gotta get the right balance of it. Again, like that balance of flavors, sweet, salty, hot, spicy, blah, blah, etc., etc. All right, nearly done here. Look at that. I'm just using, as you can see, I'm using the stalks. I'm not throwing them out. Nothing wrong with the stalks on these little button mushrooms. Nothing at all. And you very rarely will see me toss stuff out, incidentally. I don't believe in that. I believe you can just about anything and everything, and why not? Especially in this day and age, everything's so damn expensive, so why not make the most of it? As I said, we're not Jamie Oliver. We're not cooking in a restaurant. Just trying to get some good flavour into some food, make it look nice and easy. Alright, so we're good to go. Alright, bit of olive oil in the pan, yeah, extra virgin version, all of that. Some you cook with, some you don't, some you better for salad, etc. etc. And it is completely true. But like I said, but like I said, this is the two fat blokes kitchen. We don't worry about that stuff too much. So in with our shrooms. Alright, in with our shrooms. In with our shrooms. A lot of shroom here. Alright, look at it all. Okay, that's fine. We don't worry, that'll cook down a bit there nicely. Let's get a bit of a, bit of a device for stirring. High tech name for a wooden spoon. I'm just going to put a little bit of salt. Now, I want a little bit of salt to help draw out the moisture, but if I have too much, I'm going to be in trouble because of this bad boy. That is all salt in there, isn't it? And cured meats, that's what happens. So, let's do that. A little bit of a grind. A bit of pepper. Turn that heat right down now. We just don't want it to burn, we just want it to dry off. Alright. Don't forget this guy. Just as I said, the store bought prosciutto. Fine. Open her up. I'm not going to get too caught up on it. We'll just separate them out like this. Nice and thin, which means it's going to cook out really quickly. Which is good. Look at that. It's a nice ham. And very salty. And that's what we want. We want that salty flavour. Because look, you know, mushrooms have got a distinct flavour, but it's not huge, is it, you know? So, I'm just going to get this ready. Get another quick stir over here. Now, as I said before, I'm going to put some thyme in here, but I'm not going to put it in just yet. Now, normal rule of thumb is the harder herbs, like your rosemary, your thyme, sage, things like that. You can whack them in a lot earlier into the cooking process than you would a fresher herb, like a, a softer herb, like a parsley or a coriander. Except for coriander root, of course. Um, 
the reason for that is they stand up more on the flavour. But I'm, I, I don't. I only want to get a little hint of the flavour, so I'm not really worried about cooking it in. So I'm just going to add a little bit of later, just enough to taste. All right, so the prosciutto is just cut up roughly, as you can see, nothing fancy there. We've, uh, we've brought that down quite a bit. As you can see, there's still a bit of steam coming off there. That's just the moisture pouring out of it. But that's looking and smelling great. So I'm going to add a bit of this now. Engage my prosciutto. And wait, as soon as this hits the pan, that fat, mm mm mm, pours out of the prosciutto. Pours out of the prosciutto. Alright, let's just spin that around in there. That's coming along nicely. In a second I'm going to stick my garlic in, but like I said, I'm really leaving it late, deliberately. I don't want to do it too early. There's where we're at. It's alright, isn't it? I can't explain how it smells, obviously, but you can imagine. You've got, a, you've got that saltiness really coming through. Try and get down here. You've got that saltiness through from the prosciutto. Really good. Cracking, actually. You can taste that yourself in a second, but anyway. So that's all good. It's coming along fine. There's some good size pieces of uh, prosciutto in here, you can see. And I'm not worried about that, because that helps create bigger flavours at the end. And remember, it's the fat blokes. None of this fancy schmancy, this is just about getting the tucker on the table. It looks good and it's easy. Now as you can see, nothing I've done here is hard. Anyone can do this. Alright. Reducing it a little bit more here. Doesn't require much more. Just get a little bit more heat. Now what we could do to fancy this up a little bit, is if you've got a little bit of white wine sitting in the fridge, or a little bit of chicken stock floating around, just a quick splash in the bottom of the pan, flambe it off, just to get that, not flambe it off, sorry. Just whack a little bit in the pan, just to pull those juices off the bottom. There's, there's things that are sticking to the bottom. There's not much, but a little bit that picks, picks it up and uh, basically puts a lot more flavour into this filling. It's going to be uh, full of flavour anyway. But as I said, if you've got a little bit of white wine floating around, a little bit of chicken stock, it's not a bad idea. Just a little, just a drizzle, not so that much. Right. I'm going to whack in this garlic now, and then all of a sudden we're going to have a whole nother aroma at the nose. And food, people, don't be mature. Alright. In goes that. Beautiful. Huh? This is good, this is good, this is good. Now, if I did, as I said, like, if I did have a bit of wine floating around now, it would be the perfect time to just give it a quick deglaze, but I'm not going to. Let's check that I don't have any. I don't. Got one I could open, but it's a bit early in the morning for that, so I better not. Alright. So now I've done that. That's our filling. Pretty much done. All I'm going to have to do, just before I get ready to utilising it, I'm going to add a little bit of thyme in. I'm going to add a little bit of egg, only half an egg, just to bind it all together, to help hold it together when we put it into the parcels. To, uh, to stick it in the water to, to cook it off. All right, so really as simple as that. Um, as you can see now, it looks the same, doesn't it? But that's all, that's as good as done. So all I'm gonna do is let that cool and uh, we'll come back later and we'll assemble it in. Nice little ravioli, raviola, ravioli, whatever it might be, doesn't matter. All right, I'll uh, turn it off for now. Come back to you when I'm ready to go on the next bit. ta -da. Right, guys, welcome back to the uh, Two Fat Blokes Kitchen, where what I'm doing now is I'm just putting together the tail end of this ravioli extravaganza. Look, these little bad boys here have just cooled down a little bit. That's the mixture that we've been cooking up uh, over there earlier. 
You can see this white stuff. No, I haven't put some bad things in there. That's a bit of parmesan. I've just put a bit of parmesan in there. We're going to mix that in, all right? Just a little bit of the parmesan. Give it a bit of that richness, because we're not going to put parmesan on at the end. We're just going to put butter and sage. That's really simple, but look, you can put on whatever sauce. I'm just showing you how to make the ravioli. You use whatever sauce, but I'm just going to put butter and sage. That's it. All right, so we've got that. We just need something to bind it together, hold it a little, little bit in. So we're going to chuck an egg in there. I don't want a whole egg. I'm going to put half an egg. It gets a little bit tricky, but it's not too tough. We've all this before. Even the average hack has had a crack at this. You just pour a little bit off the off the egg. Whoa, there we go. The whole lot goes in. Luckily, we didn't get too much all in. Yeah, even the fat flakes can botch it up too. Eh? That's all right. Doesn't matter. We've got her. Uh, up in there to bind it all up. So what we'll do now, we'll just mix that in. Right, so we now have our binding in there as well. A little bit of egg. Be nice once that's cooked in anyway, right? So that's all good. So there's our mixture. Simple as that. Remember I said a little bit of time. Not too much. We're just going to put a little bit in here, just to give it a little bit of that wintry smell, if you like, or flavour to it, because we've got some pretty heavy flavours, rich flavours. So let's uh, utilise that by putting a bit of thyme in there as well. Just combinations of all these flavours work brilliantly. All right, get that out of there. Making a bit of a mess. It's all right. Remember, we're the two fat blokes. We don't care about that. I know you're wondering why is there only one fat bloke in here? Well, that's the other one's actually working, you know, that's like guys. Uh, so, all we're going to do now, always, 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 a little bit of that bad boy. We need a bit of pepper. We don't need salt. I haven't tasted it for seasoning as you should, of course, because I know it's going to be salty enough. Because remember, we used a little bit of that salt when we were kicking, up, kicking off the... Uh, the, pan uh, the, the uh, mushrooms, and then when we put the pancetta in, bang, salt, 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 bloody city. Nothing to do with Mormons, but don't worry about that. All right, so, away we go. That's it, mixture ready to go, cracking good. Now, this is where the really easy bit, the cheats part comes in. I have been to the shop, and I have picked up a packet of these bad boys. These bad boys here are wonton skins. Technically, of course, they're not pasta, they're rice-based, not uh, egg-based, but uh, not um, wheat-based. But let's not worry about that. It doesn't make any difference. It makes life a damn sight easier. Uh, and we're the two fat blokes. We're doing it easily and cheaply and quickly. All right, so what I've done is I've opened, opened my pack and I've already laid some out. I'll see if I can reset this to help you see what's going on. It's not really good... Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, technology I have with this camera. I'll try and move it in a bit closer so you can see what's going on. But you can possibly see here, I've got all these, uh, I've got 10 of them laid out. Actually, I'll tell you what, when I put something up there to stop the sun, you can see, can't you? Anyway, there they all are. They're all laid out. So quite simply, all I'm going to do is spoon a small amount of filling. That's all. Don't need much. It's rich as rich can be. This thing at the markers, don't you worry about that. So we're going to plow this stuff into the right in the middle. As I said, not too much because also we don't want it to pop out the sides when you cook it. Because the worst thing about ravioli is if she splits open in the in the boiling, in the boiling water, and yibbity yibbity, it's cactus. All right, so we're just going to put a bit of this mixture smack in the middle. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, it's not. A, it's not a. It's not rocket science, folks. Just you know, put a bit in, bit in, bit in. No need to measure it out exactly. If you don't get it right, no one's going to come and shoot you. Still going to taste good. Don't you worry about that. And this is how easy this is. Now, I know I keep saying that, but it is easy. And this is the sort of thing you can really, really, really impress people with if you wish. All right, so nearly there. How many we got now? A couple to go. Couple, couple. Now I find, this is, I'm doing this for an entree tonight. So I find that two pieces is actually enough. Because again, it is so rich with the butter. It's so rich. Two pieces enough. 
If you go to three or four pieces, sure it's going to taste great for the first half of the meal, but you know what, you're going to get a bit jack of it. You're going to think, oh yeah, I don't know, a bit too rich, because it is. It is. Alright, that's a bit much on that one, little bad boy there, we'll take a bit off. Alright. So, that's it. Simple, as you can see. Look, it's not perfectly presented, really, that sort of, don't worry. We're only halfway there, of course. Just wash up the old hands, got to keep them clean in the old kitchen. Alright, so, now, what we need to do is, uh, I'm just going to get a little bit of a trick here. And you can call it cheating, but you know what? Makes it easier. Alright. So what I'm getting is, you can see there, that's a warm cup full of, eh, slightly lukey warm water. It's not really warm at all, but you know, it's a little bit warm because the cup was a little bit warm. Straight off the top of the coffee machine, that's why. So, um, as if you can see, I'm just getting a bit of water here. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to moisten, I'll just do one to show you. I'm going to moisten the edges like that so that it all sticks together. Do two at a time. When you get brave, you can do four or five or six at a time, but you don't want to do too many because you don't want them to dry out. So they dry out, they're not going to stick. And then it opens up and splits during, uh, during the cooking. That's not what we want. All right, so then what we do, really, really, really easy. You grab a, a little piece, fold him on top, little press down in the middle. All right, and do another one, little piece on top, little press down the middle. Right, now there's one really key element we want to do here. I'm not too worried about how she looks, but we, we've got to tap this down. But we've got to use a little bit of a circular motion with your fingers to get all the air out. All the air out, all right? So that's what we want to do. And then as you can see, voila, look at that. Right, I didn't tell you that, incidentally, I put a bit of baking paper down just to make it easier, and a little bit of flour. There, not a lot, don't need a lot. Right, so there is one ravioli, beautiful. Right, I'll put you on hold while I finish those bad boys off, all right? Simple as that, just bear with All right, welcome back, guys. As you can see, they are all made up. Very, very simple. Look at that. Don't they look nice and beautiful? Look at that beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I'm not going to worry too much about doing anything more than that. They're going in the fridge for later because I'm... I'm these are going out tonight to a catering gig. What I'll do first, so I'll cook one of them just to show you what it's about, the wacky with the butter and the sage and how simple it is to take it from this to a cracking entree that'll impress any of the chicks you boys might want to, uh, you know, what anyway, let's uh, not get into that stuff, that's for you to talk about. So just give me a second and I'll uh, set this up over there and get some water boiling, some boiling salted water and we'll be good to go. We're back on deck in the uh, kitchen now. I'm just going to cook up one of these ravioli for you. I'm going to do one because I don't really feel like eating and it doesn't look like I really need to, do I? So I'm just going to do one to show you. We've made them. You've seen how easy that is. Now we're going to cook them. It's even easier. There's only just one little key to it and that's the butter. Let's not worry about that now. On the boil I have some hot salted water, boiling water. I'll show you that in a second. I'll just go grab my piece of ravioli. Here's my piece of ravioli ready to go. You wouldn't believe the phone, the, the doorbell just rings. It's not, oh, good afternoon, sir, I'd like to say. It was an actual at the door. Oh, good afternoon, sir, we're from Origin Energy. Come on, mate. You're on the phone here at the door. Jesus. They're not just in Mumbai, folks. Anyway, nothing wrong with that. There's no problem in selling, and uh, I don't mind my Indian tucker, so I'm not going to have a go at those boys. They work hard for their living. All right, so we're ready to go here. I'll just use my high-tech uh, camera and swing in down here. And hopefully, if my technology holds out to a base level of ridiculousness, I'll tell you what, the sooner NBN get onto this program, the better. Um, I can't, you can't see squat, can you? But look, in here, I can assure you, you can see now there is a boiling solid water into which this bad boy goes. <laughs> he ain't going to spend too long in there. Look, it's splashing everywhere. Don't worry about that. Luckily, 
We're the fat blokes, we don't care. All right, so what we need is a, a slotted spoon like this little one here, simply so we can get this little guy out of here when it's cooked. In the meantime, I have me a nice little pan. I'm just gonna stick that on there and start heating that little sucker up because that is where we're gonna make our sauce. Here, we obviously just have a plate. Nothing clear about it, so we're gonna, nothing fancy about this presentation. You can do whatever you like. You can pre it up or not pre it up. And as we keep coming back to, taste, taste, taste. The rest is trivial. I also have a couple of these bad boys. What are these? These are sage. Sage is a fantastic, uh, fantastic herb. Goes with many things. Beautiful with pork, incidentally. Um, it's an absolute cracking herb. And when it's added to butter, the smell that comes out is just absolutely exquisite. All right, so, and obviously I have a butter. We all know what butter is, okay. While that's happening, I'm just gonna whack a chunk of butter in here. Not overly scientific, but you do need a fair bit. I know that's scary to some, especially those uh, health conscious folk like myself, of course, that are looking out for our uh, waistlines. All right, we're gonna get that up to a bit of heat now. This is the tricky part. Not the cooking of the bad boy in there, but the heating up of this butter. Because we don't wanna burn this butter, because if we do, we're really, well, there we go, technical failure meltdown in the kitchen there we go it's better than that all right if we if we botch up this butter it's either going to be burnt in which case it's no good or it's going to be underdone in which case it's no good because we don't want it to taste like butter because that's just fat right so what we need to do is let it get to that slightly nutty flavor that comes out of butter when it's cooked just right doesn't take long all right now our little guy here it looks about done, how do you tell? Well, I think we all know how to cook pasta. The filling is cooked, remember? It's just a bit of heating to go on. You can put all that business, get a bit of the flavor of that uh, um, thyme in there and also, you know, bring out the uh, cheese as well. Look at that, perfect, perfect. In go these bad boys, voila. Now, you can't smell that and it doesn't look like much. I know, it, it looks a bit dull, but trust me, that is cracking. Just about 20 seconds of that going. This is gonna come out in a second. We're just about coming into good. Now, what we do, about 20 seconds. What's that, is that 10? 10 on the flat bloke's clock, which means absolutely nothing. I'll drop the heat off now. What I would do, I'm not gonna chop it up just for one taste, but I'll just squeeze a few drops of lemon juice in there just to tart it up a bit. And the fat blokes, we don't mind a bit of tart. Uh, food, of course, I'm referring to. All right, now, look at that, bang on there. Presentation, yeah, who cares? Doesn't matter. On goes the sauce, look at that. Look at that, Hey, eh? That's it. That is as simple as it gets. Um, it's well presented, it doesn't look fancy, it looks half authentic. Um, the smell, you can't smell it, I can. I can tell you it's cracking. And the flavor of that is an absolute ball terror. Will impress the fussiest of female folk. You can't go wrong with this one here. I suggest, as I said, two of them, side by side, bit of sauce over the top. Fantastic, you can't go wrong with this. Enjoy, good luck, and have a crack at it. And we'll speak to you next time in the Fat Bloke Kitchen. Catch you later. Spiked out, I could trip a referee. Tell by my attitude that I'm most definitely from. Yeah.